Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now. Time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. Feedback. 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 Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Hey there, it's me, Butter, with my new book, The Mini Adventures of These Nuts. Let's be nuts about our health. Join me and my friends, Wally Walnut, Almond Cruz, Pumpkin Spice, Chica Chaminsky, Morgan Raisin, and Halle Cranberry. Here with rhythm and song to share a fun way to stay safe and healthy. So together we can all be nuts about our health. Ebook available now on Amazon or get a hardcover copy at www.thesenutstrailmix.com. That's nuts with a Z. Cabin fever? Not to worry. Join me Sunday, June 13th, as we cruise down Woodward Avenue and learn about our businesses on and near Woodward Avenue. If you enjoy the Black History Tour, you'll enjoy Sunday, June 13th, 12 noon, 8 Mile and Woodward. And we are hot right here on WHPR, WHBS. On a Monday morning, it's so nice outside. I want you all to know if you haven't been out yet. And thank you so much for joining Feedback, a Hood Research Positive Image production. I got great news for you this morning. We have the Godfather of Talk Radio. And I'm sure there are some of you out there who remember Bob Law. He will be with us momentarily. I just want to say good morning to some of you, to Rosa and Vera and Ron and, and to Dave who called last week and uh, he was concerned about it but I'm so glad that he was tuned in and glad that he called in. Anyone you want to say good morning to? Well I just want to say good morning to everybody that got up with us this morning. It's a lot of love <laughs> in Detroit and across the world. It certainly we is. Worldwide people. That's right. We have people on the line and I certainly hope that one of them is, is our, our wonderful guest. He hails out of New York. Would you pick up yes, one, one of those? Well, let's, let's find out. Who? This is Mr. Who? Brother Bob Law waiting on us. Who's who? Let's see. Uh-huh. Line three, this is Feedback, Theo Bronhood Research. Who are we speaking with right now? That wasn't it, huh? <laughs> behind curtain number one curtain number there two curtain number is. three all right <laughs> the great bob law from new york we're yes, so glad indeed. that you're with us and uh for those of you who remember we lost a lot of sleep listening to this man and it was all well worth it brother of a night talk yes, yes indeed uh-huh well, good morning. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, clearly. Okay. All right. We picked up right this time. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Oh, we're okay. not. Are we okay there, Tim? We're not breaking up, are we? Okay. All oh, okay. right. Okay. Sounds clear. like we got a good connection there, Brother Bob Law. How are we doing mm -hmm. this morning? Yes, sir. I'm good. How are you doing? It? I'm well. How are you I'm well. doing in Detroit? Oh, we're doing good here. And um, I, I'm told that uh, our... The virus count is, is down, and, and the governor is beginning to allow businesses to open once again. We've been on again, off again, like Finnegan. 
but uh, now we're supposed to be okay, and students are going back to school today. And uh, oh, good, good. We will see. You know, that's that's what's happening in New York. It's funny though, is that when the cities were closed down, people were kind of grumbling and disgruntled because of had to stay in because they couldn't talk to people, couldn't see people in mm-hmm. person. But now that the city here in New York is opened up, people are saying they don't want to come out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> First, it's too soon. It's too hmm. soon. We don't want to come out. We're not sure yet. You know? They're not g- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, geez. When, when they were told to stay in, they wanted to be out. Hmm. Now right. they can be out. They want to stay in. Well, first you say you do, and then you don't. Go then ahead you and say, sing, you girl. Will, <laughs> then you won't. <laughs> Well, we all know it's rather traumatic with you guys in New York. You guys are like the epicenter for quite a while of the pandemic. And, um, my God, a lot of people were lost up there in New York. A lot of families impacted by COVID. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So um, it's, it's not something that you easily ease out of. Yeah. And, and uh, speaking of being impacted, uh, we in, in this uh, country – as a black community are being impacted. This month, the month of May is uh, Music Month. June is Music Month. June is Music June Month. Is music month. We're coming up on G- somebody G- told Black me. Music Month. Yes. Somebody gave me the wrong information. Well, I'm going to tell you something that I do know is a fact, and that is Coleman Alexander Young was born on May 24th. Today is May 24th, All right, right? All, All right. right. 1918. Mayor Coleman Alexander Young served as mayor in the city of Detroit for 20 years, starting in 1974. Now, happy birthday to Mayor Coleman Alexander Young. An icon, Mm -hmm. for certain. Yes, he was. Now, we have uh, an impact on our community through something that has has been... uh, uh, started very, 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 very ingenious, I should say. But I'm so glad that um, uh, it, it's it's being revealed now. And um, the National Leadership Conference has a, uh, a, a way of addressing it to make sure that more and more of our people understand what's going on. So can you uh, tell us about that? You know, uh, you were saying, uh, do you? Yeah, I, I feed. Let me, let me see if I can switch over. To a different phone? You want to call back in? No, no. What? Well, okay. Uh, so go in. Yes, go but, in. No, but, but you don't hear anything, do you? Yeah. I, can, I can hear you, but it's going in and out. It's not on the speakerphone, are you, what? Brother Law? No. You know, I, I went to the speaker for a moment to see if it would get rid of the. Uh, Oh. The feedback, the echo. Yeah, it's right, a bit of an echo right, there. Right, right, right. So, but you need you need me to call back? Yeah, yes, yeah. would Give you it a shot. Do, do that? Indeed. All right, I'll call the same number. Now, don't pick up the phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Press the next button. Indeed, indeed. Press it take the next call. Oh. We, we don't have any else on the line oh, right okay. now. They, oh, they okay. went. They went. They was listening to Bob Law, oh, okay. and they well, mellowed that, down. Well, that's fine. You know how it is. Okay. Bob Law get everybody's attention. Absolutely. You know how to grab it because he been. And you know, I met Bob Law back in 1995, and they were down here promoting the Million Man March, and mm-hmm. uh, that's when I met the brother. And uh, I, you know, I talked to him about the goals for the Million Man March. And, for a lot of people out there that don't know, he was one of the brothers that was connected with putting that together. Mm-hmm. And that was quite an event in our history. Mm-hmm. It looks like he's got right back in. Let's get Brother yes. Bob Law on the line. Okay. This is feedback. Okay. Your bro, Bob Law, is on the line once again. All right. Okay. Right. Well, a little feedback still there, so, but it's not as much. So we'll just do it. We're going to oh, work through right. it. Okay. All right. You know, when you mentioned that it was Black Music Month, mm-hmm. June is Black Music Month, it came out. So that the Black Music Association being formed, it was formed in June, mm. and as a result of that, uh, in June declared by the federal government, the the, uh, the June was declared as Black Music, and it's supposed when we come together to celebrate the history and the legacy and and the significance of of Black music, mm-hmm. music coming out of the Black experience in in the world, mm-hmm. and it all kind of comes. Together here, the uh, uh, music makes African American music makes uh, right here in in the in the United States, and so here's a concern. However, there, we have seen the uh, ongoing. 
ongoing disarray, the ongoing violence and self-destructive behavior in our community. Mm-hmm. And we have addressed it. We have marched in the street. We have uh, we stood up for all saying, whose streets are our streets? Take the streets back. We have, we have launched any number of anti-violence initiatives. Uh, we've had gang summits. Mm-hmm. Uh, any number of things. Mm-hmm. Churches have gone to the street and prayed. Community have held uh, vigils in the street. And the science continues. The, the, the somehow this idea of killing ourselves is being promoted to our people. Mm-hmm. Not just young people. Mm-hmm. These grown folks fight the hallways and hotels, getting beat up by their boyfriends. Wow. And uh, where, where is this idea coming from? Where is this, where is this, this violence coming from? Mm-hmm. Now, so we began, we began to look at that, look closer. And one of the things that we discovered is that while we are addressing the violence after it occurs, while we're talking about how we must respect each other and how we must protect each other, mm-hmm. there's somebody else saying, kill each other. Right. There's somebody else saying, Dis- uh, disrespect women, denigrate women. Uh, there's a different set of values and ideas mm-hmm. that are being cons- consistently promoted into our community. Mm-hmm. And and so what we have discovered is that there is a body of music that's called killer rap. There's a body of music that consistently being pumped into our community. Mm-hmm. And right up under our nose, these kill each other values, this self-destructive value, this murderous lyric mm-hmm. is being disseminated in our community on a regular basis, every day, on most black music radio stations that will not play real music, mm-hmm. will not play the new song by Allison Williams, Summer Night in Harlem. Uh, and and the, the most, for me, in fact, the most disappointing is gospel music. Hmm. Gospel gospel. music is, is is the most privileged and and uh, is very but it is the most privileged, meaningless music out. While be nice, enemy, brother Bob. <laughs> be nice. Uh, <laughs> Copy that, copy that. Well, you know what, brother? You know, I'd like to say, but, you know. but the music is is saying things. And here's what's important to understand now: the music that is that is saying denigrate women is a guy talking about how he could, uh, how, so much does he dominate his woman, mm-hmm. or that he could urinate in the cup. Give it to a teller as lemonade and she'll drink. Oh. Now that's the clean version of he says clean. in the song. In the song? songs about killing oh. people and, and denigrating women and gang rape and mm. and romanticizing murder. Mm. See, and that is very appealing mm. to powerless people. People have a human need to have some power control over their own lives and their, their own destiny. Wow. And so that romanticized power, what is this young brother who, who said that when he has the gun in his hand, he's somebody. Mm. People have to respect him then. Mm-hmm. Others talk about, if you listen to the lyrics, and you can hear them talk about how the, the money that they're spending on cars and clothes is what distinguishes them from everybody else. Mm. 
these other people, other rappers, they don't compare to me. I've got Gucci something. I'm driving, I've got the Ferraris, and I'm drinking cognac. And I'm, all of that kind of, of materialism, mm. as they understand it, gives their lives some value. Well, I understand that. Mm. See, the music, people, people have been saying, that the music is just music. It's not the music, it's the social condition. Now, the social condition, and, and they are correct, that there is a social condition that creates a, 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 another condition and, and creates a, uh, a response to that social condition. Now, the social condition is there. The music however, instructs on mm. how to respond to the social condition. Mm. And the response being advocated in the music is incorrect. There is a social condition. There's employment and poor, poor education, uh, debt, uh, poor health care, mm-hmm. police violence. Mm. All of that is true. Right. That is the social condition. But music has set out to instruct our young as to how to respond so to, to the social, social condition. condition. And the response to the social condition is self destruct. Mm. And and that is what we have to we did we you know, I heard Reverend William Barber say that tried to interview him a couple of weeks ago and we we talk about technical difficulty on the phone, but but one of the things he did say was that we are called to lead a movement. And I believe that that is correct. We just have to define what that movement is. Mm-hmm. But that, I think that we have a need to uh, launch a, a, a movement that is rooted in the pursuit of righteousness. We need to return to righteousness. Brother Bob, Bob can a, I cut in here for a second? Because I'm feeling what you're saying, but I think the people don't understand the genesis of how we got here. I mean, back in the 80s, I grew up in the 80s. Matter of fact, Brother Malisha Bass down there, brother in New York, over the New Black Panthers, went to Howard with me. He had a group called the Defiant Giants. And that's when brothers were speaking truth to power. And it was starting to get across. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, you had Chuck D, Public Enemy, come out and say, Hip-hop is the new black CNN, and that's when they broke us down, because you had X-Clan, you had Poor Righteous Teachers, you had Arrested Development, Black Brand Nubian. Black music was starting to say to the white power structure, we tired of this foolishness y'all got us under. We tired of being under this racism, and they broke it down. They brought in the whole gangster rap from L.A., and they switched the whole game up. And the next thing you know, P. Diddy and them guys was mm-hmm. talking about buying chinchillas and Maseratis and all of this stuff. And it went from fighting against the power structure to materialism. And crack. And, and guns, right. And, and crack, crack and foolishness. Mm-hmm. And we haven't been able to get out of what they, they formed that for us. And we don't but realize we they've been programming wait, wait, us wait. ever since. Wait, yep. And then, well, that is true. Uh, you mentioned the mention of Mars just a few minutes ago. And and a, a significant turning point was the million man march. White folk, white policymakers understood the the power, the significance of that million man march more so than black folk did. Mm-hmm. And they decided after the march that there was changes that need to occur. Right. And that, that was the beginning of the assault of black talk rate. So when that, as an agency, stopped spending money on black talk stations, that because the talk radio, that was very, very responsible for the success of the million mark. Man, watch, that's right. Exactly. Did this be uh, uh, a great deal happened to, as, as the power, see, there's the power and resources within the black community that, that is still there. But that power and resources have been overlooked. And, and the, the Million Man Hunt, which is the large gathering of black folk history of this country, and you'll yeah, notice yeah. they still don't talk about it.
about it when they talk about Black History Month and they talk about Dr. King's March on Washington. Right. The Million Men March dwarfed the March on Washington. Right. We don't was, talk about it, it enough. Yeah, and, we and don't it talk about it enough. That You're right. Didn't go to D.C. to yeah. ask white folk for anything. Mm-hmm. It was the march that went to added more than a million black men, and they are still reluctant to even acknowledge that it was more than a million. They they uh, uh, un- they, uh, they understood the significance. But I want you to be the the black youth black youth see one of the things that the black art movement pointed out is that music is the literature of the masses. People don't read, can't read, don't want to read, don't have time to read. They were listening to the radio. Mm-hmm. They all read the music. And so with people who were not reading Hakim out of book, perhaps, and, and maybe there were people who, you know, who weren't doing reading uh, the, the critical text that we produced with, with genius. Third world press. But they, <laughs> right. Yes, and, but uh, all of the, 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 you know, there was a whole body of information coming even before the Black Art Movement. John Phillips and James Paul, Lorraine Hansberry, the, you know, uh, Richard Wright, and on. And, and then the Black Art Movement and Larry Hill and and Avery Parker and Sonia Sanchez. And then uh, I, I could, you can spend the whole day I mean, all of the people who we get right and provide clarity. France Fanon, we were reading, you know, people who were providing clarity. The mass of the people were not reading any of those books. Brother Bob Law, engineer, tell us we got two minutes of coming up on the break. Okay. So, so you want our yeah. first commercial. Okay, we're going to okay. go to the break, Brother Bob Law, and then we're going to get right back to Brother Bob Law out of New York City. <laughs> Night Talk, a powerful brother in the yes. movement for sensibility, peace, mm-hmm. and the end to the foolishness, folks. We got to know what's going on out there. It's all about love. Stay tuned and call others. Let them know that Bob Law is on with Hood Research this morning right here for your understanding. We'll be back momentarily. You're watching Detroit's own WHPR-TV. Detroit Live. This is Theo Broden from Feedback. You can watch me 24 hours a day, seven days a week at WHPR-TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR-TV Now. Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Cabin fever? Not to worry. Join me Sunday, June 13th, as we cruise down Woodward Avenue and learn about our businesses on and near Woodward Avenue. If you enjoy the Black History Tour, you'll enjoy Sunday, June 13th, 12 noon, 8 Mile and Woodward. Hey there, it's me, Butter, with my new book, The Many Adventures of These Nuts. Let's be nuts about our health. Join me and my friends, Wally Walnut, Almond Cruz, Pumpkin Spice, Chica Chaminsky, Morgan Raisin, and Hallie Cranberry. Here with rhythm and song to share a fun way to stay safe and healthy. So together we can all be nuts about our health. Ebook available now on Amazon or get a hardcover copy at www.thesenutstrailmix.com. That's nuts with a Z. I'm James Ford, founder of the Obama Weekend and a partner of the Hood Research Team. Composed of the knowledgeable Theo Broden, the super analyst Henry, and the colorful Al Martin. This team discusses politics, seen and not seen, at the national, state, and local level. But to enhance the goals of this team, join or donate to Hood Research by visiting Twitter or Facebook, or visit hoodresearch.org, or call 248-234-2000. 
2371. You can also join Hood Research on Phonecast every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time by calling 978-990-5000, access code 338-729. Thank you very much. This is Theo Groton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on... Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. And take us along with you. We are back. I'm so glad you all stayed tuned. And I hope that during the break you had an opportunity to let someone else know that the great Bob Law is on with us this morning. Uh, okay, uh, Bob, go ahead. We are we are back. We're back. Yes, we are back. Oh, let me just hurry up though. So if, if you want to take some phone calls, I'm just I'm trying to make this point this clear. Mm-hmm. See, the music music has always been a primary source. Of, of ideas and information and values and messages for the masters of the people. Mm-hmm. The music is the literature of the masses. Everybody listens to the music and always has been. Mm-hmm. And, and relevancy did not begin with hip-hop. The, the, the music has, been, has nurtured us for all of our, for decades, has nurtured us as a people historically. The, you know, the public enemy did the song, Fight the Power. However, the Isley Brothers did it first mm-hmm. and, and said the same thing, called it Fight the Power. Mm-hmm. There's been positive, there's been music, Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye, mm-hmm. uh, music that was lifting consciousness. James Brown uh, energized people, black people globally with, with a Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. There was music that was speaking to the notion of, of loving each other and, and, and empowering black folk. And then came hip-hop and joined in that movement. They didn't create the movement of positive music. They mm-hmm. came with positive, right. positive music in a somewhat different style. But the music mm-hmm. was always where the uh, core values that informed our whole and entire community were being expressed. And there are people who understood the power and the significance of the music. And so the music, as the brother pointed out, then came under attack. And it wasn't just positive hip-hop that didn't get played. No positive music. Gary Bird's song, The Crown, didn't get played. The uh, music love songs, songs that honored and respected women, were no longer being played. And the only and, and white consultants were coming in and telling uh, black radio stations, and, and those black radio stations at that time were in the hands of black owners. And the consultants were telling them that the black community did not need to hear talk and news. They needed to hear music. And in fact, they really only needed to hear old music, so they began to create this whole movement of, of um, uh, sob, what they, I forgot what they called it now, but it was all oldies. They didn't call it oldies, but every station, stations all over the country were now playing uh, classic R&B, classic Why, soul, and today's R&B. Yeah. And, and that, that was the theme. And that eliminated all of the music. It eliminated all the new music. It eliminated all of the music that spoke to the hearts of our people, and it was replaced with music that was calling for the, uh, calling on us to self-destruct. And so in June, yes. in, in Mac, Black Music Month, on June 13th, there's going to be a hearing, uh, and, and, and people, but particularly uh, thought leaders and influential people and leaders of organizations and churches and, uh, are being called together for a hearing 
where people are coming to testify as to the real consequences of this music. I don't think that people fully understand mm -hmm. what this music is saying to our people. And so there are going to be educators, uh, women's organizations, psychiatrists. People need to hear what the, the power that, see, what's, what's misunderstood is the real power that music has on your, on your brain, on your central nervous system, and, and it is one of the ways to, you can use music effectively to uh, preach or teach core values. And, and that's what our music has always done. But now those core values, and it's still doing that, but those core values are now values that have been created for us by people who despise us and have tricked us into promoting their core values while we claim that in doing their bidding, we are keeping it real. Mm. And so we just, we can need, that's going to happen. But I know you want to go to the phones, and so <laughs> I'm going to get out of the way so you can do that. No, I don't well. want so, you to go anywhere. She wants to talk to you. Sylvia? Yes. Go, go ahead, honey. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, we know the problems, but how do we get the old heads as well as the young heads into some kind of community center so that we can um, deprogram and reprogram and, and help them to understand that mind and population control is no joke. And mm -hmm. because of all this manipulation that's going on, people don't even know they're under hip, hypnosis. They don't even know they're being hypnotized and, and uh, sent in the wrong direction. They know nothing about their history. They know nothing about their true identity, uh, so that caused them not to believe that they have capabilities. They know nothing about the inner visions and who they are, where they come from, and all the uh, the uh, geniuses and the uh, empires and all the great things that they are as a people. So how do we get uh, folks that's committed to open their doors and to bring healing and knowledge to their people to deprogram them and reprogram them into the purpose of what they're supposed to be. Okay, good question. Okay, thank you, Sylvia. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. go, go ahead, Bob. You know, the uh, people have been saying that for decades, how much we don't know. But as you hear the sister lay it out, you can hear that she does know. And there are a great many other of our people who really do understand the nature of the assault on us. Many other people will call here today to say the same thing that she said, mm -hmm. how we don't know our history how, and, and that we need to be reprogrammed. But when you point that out, you are pointing out that you do know. And those who know have to take up the responsibility. When she said, how do we? She has, she and others who do know, have to take up the, res the responsibility to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Take up that responsibility. And, and for instance, one of the things that uh, we, 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 I was saying earlier, we are called to lead a movement. Mm -hmm. So we need to launch, and the way to get people to understand and, and do pre precisely what the sisters say, we need to launch a movement that pushes back against, that very clearly and specifically pushes back against the brainwashing, pushes back against the values that are being taught mm -hmm. into our community, and that's where the music comes in. Mm -hmm. We need a new music movement. Mm -hmm. We see that we need uh, songs, and and uh, and if you have to go out people going out in the street with loudspeakers and driving around the community and having black block parties and start deliberately playing nurturing life-giving music mm. we need to we need to put our own thoughts out into the marketplace of ideas mm -hmm. so that if we need songs, you know back in the day like i say it was it was before hip-hop there was people there was a song Black Pearl, Precious Little Girl, I'm going to put you up where you belong. I need that kind of music right. again. You know, we need, uh, in gospel music, mm -hmm. Donald Lawrence's song, There's a King in You. Mm 
Mm. We need more of the Donald Lawrence kind of music, the gospel music that m- is being made by Kirk right. Franklin and all those other people that uh, who are really just, they're not on a mission. They ain't, they're not trying, to, but they're trying, they're on a mission. Their mission is to have a hit record. Mm-hmm. So they're making music that is just as frivolous as it can be so that it can be played on pop radio. Mm-hmm. They, they understand that if you can get airplay on pop radio, you can sell more records, and that's all they really are trying to do. Mm-hmm. And as performers, I guess they have a right to do that. We, what we need is musicians who are on a mission. See, the enemy... And the music that they are putting out into the universe, that stuff is on a, they're on a mission to destroy our people. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, the people who control the record industry, they make money mm-hmm. off of uh, those artists. Right. And only a handful of those artists really make big money. Mm-hmm. But all of those people out there doing all of that killer music, that, that's, that, that is not... Uh, the, the record industry is not trying to have a hit record with all of that stuff. They're mm. trying to disseminate an idea mm. that is going to help destroy emerging generations mm-hmm. coming Touch out of the black that, community. Brother, we need a music me. that is mm. part of the fight back. Mm-hmm. So to answer her question, that for me, we're going to try and organize this music movement. We're going to try and put... Oh, if we're called to lead a movement, we're called to lead a movement for righteousness. We're called to lead, uh, and so we're going to uh, launch this movement where we're, we're trying to get back to uh, righteous behavior. Mm-hmm. So I want to I get back to behavior where people deliberately set out to please God. When you talk about the Million Man March, the scripture that was the guiding principle for the Million Man March was my people, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from the evil ways, then they will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. I want a movement that is based on that scripture. I want a movement that is, that is pursuing good and, and, uh, and, and, and you know, pursuing righteous behavior because we, that, that's where our power is. Mm-hmm. And, and we've got so much good. So much, uh, re- so many resources of value in the black community that uh, we need to be reminded of that. And so, since mm-hmm. the music is still the literature of the masses, what if we could start a movement where where uh, we, where the mo- where the music is up front and and reminding us to keep reaching for higher ground, mm-hmm. as Stevie did some years ago. How long ago was that? Mm-hmm. You know, how long ago were the staple singers preaching and teaching respect to self? That was before mm-hmm. hip hop. Right. And and so we need a return to that music and the music was so pretty and love songs. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with love songs. Right. But t- teaching each other to, to love each other uh, and reminding each other really, not necessarily teaching but reminding each other to love each other. And, and to respect each other. And that's what our music did. That's why people loved Smokey Robinson so much. Mm-hmm. You know, so could, that, that music, uh, to try a little tenderness mm-hmm. from, from Otis. You got right. another call, and Brother Law. They want to get in. They, you know they want to talk to you now. Well, come on. Cause, oh, I got to go in a minute. All right. Come All on. right, let's get this on in here. Line three, you all with Brother Bob Law. Yes. Good morning, Queen. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning, my brother. Yes, good morning. Now, how you have we a question? Who are we all with? Peaceful, peaceful. Hey, uh, good to hear. It's good to hear you, uh, brother Bob. I think brother Bob. I think we didn't lost brother Bob. Uh-oh. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. Hey, brother, brother Uh-oh. Bob. I, I remember back over in uh, over in New York, mm-hmm. Madison Square Garden, to overwhelming event, mm-hmm. brother. I, I, I show appreciate your support, brother, for the for the nation, and you've always been there, and you've been a black community. You know, and it's something that we have missed, you know, uh, Brother Bob. And uh, I remember many nights staying up all night just listening to your show here in Detroit. Mm-hmm. Everybody you know, know the night talk yes, show. Yes, goodness. Yes, yes sir. Yes, I nice. love the show, but I show sure missed that. And, no. we, you know, we, we don't have those shows no more. You now, know, you know he was talking about that Million Man March. Did you, did you get a chance to make it to the Million Man March? Sorry, brother, brother, that that showed me that God was with us was the Million Man March. Man, mm-hmm. wasn't no doubt between Madison Square Garden and the Million Man March. Brother, if, if we can't see God was with us those days, 
We'll never see God. <laughs> right. We'll totally. We'll you never can, see God. You can feel You're the right. spirit of God just walking up Capitol Avenue. I'm walking up North Capitol because my <laughs> friend stayed over there. We was walking on up. And you could just feel something just hit you. Mm. Boom. Before we brother, even we, got we, to the to the to the mall. Brother, we 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 had we, we had rooms on Pennsylvania Avenue with about four or five rooms. And we just opened our doors up that night before the event. And brothers came in from all over the country. We didn't even know them. They came and slept yes. on the floor, washed up, cleaned up before the event that morning. Mm -hmm. It was it, God was with us on on that mm -hmm. mall, brother mm -hmm. Bob. No, but no. Can you hear me but, now? Yes, but, yes. But I, I yes. want okay. to put this. I got disconnected. I got a busy signal. Oh, oh I, I want. Wow. I want I to put this out there, brother in. Bob, and, and and to the listening audience, is that you know, I think about now. You you were saying what. Uh, uh, all of a sudden, the government is saying it's all right for you to believe in UFOs. And I think about how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that since the 1930s. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, you know, you go back to Minister Farrakhan uh, 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 in 19 what 85, going to uh, D.C. and uh, exposing his his experience on the mother plane and stuff. And now they saying it's all right for you to believe it. <laughs> but, brother, you know, uh, we need brothers like you. you. You know, we need brothers like you, need brothers like Queen and, and Big Brother here on on uh, WHPR. We we need you all because, like you say, the music is a rhythm. And everything, I understand, it's moved by music or whatever. The whole universe is in a rhythm. Right. You know, that's one of the first things the doctor checks is your heart to make sure it's in the right rhythm. Right. You know, With so that. music, there's a right. science to it. We, and, and I, I'm glad you're bringing that up, Brother Bob, because, <laughs> you know, they use uh, music as a weapon today. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and it's killing our people. That's exactly you, what is... I love Brother Bob. Hey, hey, I love you. I'm glad to hear you, your voice, brother. Love you, man. My prayers out to you and to the queen and my big brother here at WHPR. Thank you. I love you all. Oh, I love, love you, too. Thank you for calling. Mm-hmm. They're using it as a weapon. That's the very point that you were making, Bob. Right. The hearing of June 13th looks at the weaponization of hip-hop and how the music industry is deliberately no doing problem. harm to the black community. And, and I think it's important that people understand that yeah. it's happening right up under our nose. And the confusion, as we said earlier, the confusion has been that people defend the youth, even though they may not intend to defend, mm -hmm. but they pr kind of try to brush it aside and say that it's the social condition that is responsible for the behavior, the self-destructive behavior in the black community, mm -hmm. because social condition is real. Those are all factors mm -hmm. that contribute to our behavior. Mm -hmm. The music, however, the music does not create the social condition. Mm -hmm. And then I think is where people become confused when they hear this. They say, no, no, the music is not creating the social condition. That's true. But the music is attempting to instruct mm -hmm. how to respond to, to the social condition. social condition. And that is where the music role becomes destructive. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is calling for the wrong response to our social condition, mm -hmm. and, and that is what we want to challenge and make people clear. But then we have to push even harder our own response mm -hmm. to the social condition, and there are a lot of people who are doing that. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of moves and a lot of activity in black communities mm -hmm. around the country. The base even trying to deal with education, with health care, right. self-determination. Right. There's a lot of work being done, but what we didn't realize that while the uh, system is, uh, is still promoting the, the social condition, the social virus, mm -hmm. while the social virus is still being pushed even harder through the black community, at the same time, there's a body of music that is advocating the wrong response and is telling people that they uh, they can dominate their families and dominate their women and their children. And they take no nonsense from each other mm -hmm. and kill each other right on the spot. All of that kind of, those kind of values, those ideas are being promoted system, I mean, consistently. Mm -hmm. and, and, right. and, it would, and it wouldn't be so bad 
if we could get our ideas into the marketplace, mm-hmm. that, that, that one of the reasons that people are only responding to these negative, self-destructive ideas, that's the only thing they yeah. hear. Right. And and that's very, very good. WGCI, radio station in Chicago, New York, the, the, all these hot 97 radio stations around mm-hmm. the country, all of them are awesome. mm-hmm. And all of them pro, pro, uh, uh, programming music that is self-destructive. Mm-hmm. And and they even have black program directors, like the, like the, the what's the, the Grammys? Oh, the, the yes, the Grammys. The Grammys. Have a black guy, Harvey Mason, mm-hmm. who is the uh, head of the Grammy committee. And see, and that's all just symbolic. That's just all, you know, this, this mm-hmm. black faces in high places. See? <laughs> and so when we go to him, to say, listen, you're, you're about to give Grammys to people who are calling for the killing of black people. Right. And and he won't even respond. He right. doesn't even have the power to mm-hmm. respond, to address his community. He doesn't mm-hmm. even have the power to do anything at all about that. That whole mm-hmm. putting the black guy up. Front, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's and then the NAACP turned around and they, uh, did and the, the similar thing. Around and gives away the same yeah, thing. Useless. Gives an award. And, and like we say for people, you know, you can uh, Google lyrics, Google lyrics, mm-hmm. and look at the, the uh, lyrics of the song that won uh, a Grammy. The Grammy uh, for for hip. Look at the hip hop lyrics. Look at the song. Yes, I song. think by a, a singer called the Baby. Yeah. And yeah. if you look at the lyrics, take the N word out. Just take out the N word, and put in there instead. Jewish, mm-hmm. put in mm-hmm. there instead, gay, mm-hmm. and then read that song, and do you, and see if you think that Harvey Mason and the Grammy people would have nominated that song for a Grammy if instead of saying N word it said Jewish mm-hmm. in right the same song instead of saying N word it would say gay. See if that song would be nominated for, you know very okay. well, that song would not be nominated for a Grammy. Right. It is only when you are demeaning and degrading black people that it is applauded and, and there is an attempt to, to make it, to normalize it, to make it feasible, make it fashionable. Mm-hmm. But if you were to, those very same songs, if they were not talking about, if they didn't, and that's the, if they didn't use the N word, those songs would never see the light of day. And mm-hmm. the reason that they use the N word, the reason that hip hop uses the N word, is because they have a need to make it clear to the white folk who control their lives and their careers and their contracts and their performing, the people who own them. They have a need to make it clear to the people who own them that they are not talking about their children. They are not talking about their wives and daughters. They have a, they have a need to make it clear to the music industry that they are only talking about their own wives and daughters. Mm. And that is the reason that they are the last people on the planet still using the N-word. Mm-hmm. Everybody all over the world, everybody all over this country says N-word rather than the word, except the hip-hop folk. Mm-hmm. They still use the word mm-hmm. because they, they still have a need to reassure white people that they are not uh, talking about them. They need to reassure whites that they are part of the assault, that these hip-hop artists mm-hmm. are, have agreed to be part of the assault on the black community. And one of the ways you prove that is you continually to refer to your people as niggas. Mm. It could be stopped in a heartbeat if the music industry said, we will not promote a song that has that word in it. Okay. Yep. Well, we're coming up mm. on the break again, Brother Law, at 10 but o'clock. Now, break. But, I, but I, I got to go. Okay. Oh, dear. Okay. Well, we You'll come back again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come back again. Okay, yep. that sounds good. We got to get you back in June for Black Music Month. That, that yeah, as well. Indeed. That's right. <laughs> and then we, when we get the um, 
definite dates and times for the National Leadership Conference hearing, then I can announce to everyone, okay? Okay, well, we know it's going to be June 13th. That's a Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, 3 to 5, or from 3 to 4.30. Okay. Uh, ideally, hopefully, from 3 to 4.30, but uh, 3 to 5, we have to, we, we have set aside. It's going to, going to be a Zoom, um, what do you call it, a Zoom presentation? Zoom or a Zoom, okay, okay. So that, uh, and you, we can give you the link, you can give the link to everybody, people can Yes. We'll It'll put the be link like on the website. To looking at a congressional hearing on TV. Okay, okay. You'll be able to hear ex experts come and testify mm -hmm. as to the impact, the consequences of, of this, this music. Mm -hmm. on the lives of our people. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we'll definitely be looking forward to that, and I'll be uh, promoting it on the uh, Saturday afternoon with Hood Research Program as well, so everyone will know. I thank you so much for taking the time out to come and share with us this morning. All right, thank you for having me. Oh, certainly. It's all love, all brother right. love, all love. Okay. Um, now... For those of you who are, are tuned in and you want to continue uh, talking about this, please feel free. The number is here on the bottom of the screen, but you can call 868-0351, That's you right. Know, Catch us after the break. We're right on that break. <laughs> that, that's right. So we shall be back momentarily. You're watching Detroit's own WHPR-TV, Detroit Live. Hi, this is Thavidi Pinda from the Feedback Program. You can watch me 24 hours a day, 7 days a week on WHPR-TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR-TV Now. Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Cabin fever? Not to worry. Join me Sunday, June 13th, as we cruise down Woodward Avenue and learn about our businesses on and near Woodward Avenue. If you enjoy the Black History Tour, you'll enjoy it Sunday, June 13th, 12 noon, 8 Mile and Woodward. I'm James Ford, founder of the Obama Weekend and a partner of the Hood Research Team composed of the knowledgeable Theo Broden, the super analyst Henry, and the colorful Al Martin. This team discusses politics, seen and not seen, at the national, state, and local level. But to enhance the goals of this team, join or donate to Hood Research by visiting Twitter or Facebook or visit hoodresearch.org or call 248-234-2371. You can also join Hood Research on Phonecast every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time by calling 978-990-5000, access code 338-729. Thank you very much. Hey there, it's me, Butter, with my new book, The Many Adventures of These Nuts. Let's be nuts about our health. Join me and my friends, Wally Walnut, Almond Cruz, Pumpkin Spice, Chica Chaminsky, Morgan Raisin, and Halle Cranberry. Here with rhythm and song to share a fun way to stay safe and healthy. So together, we can all be nuts about our health. Ebook available now on Amazon. Or get a hardcover copy at www.thesenutstrailmix.com. That's nuts with a Z. Got cabin fever? Not to worry. Join me Sunday, June 13th, 
that we cruise down Woodward Avenue and learn about our businesses on and near Woodward Avenue. If you enjoy the Black History Tour, you'll enjoy it Sunday, June 13th, 12 noon, 8 Mile and Woodward. Hi, this is Lawanda. This is R.J. Watkins. Coming to you to bring you some information about the number one detox in the nation, Lemon Burn. Lemon Burn helps to turn the fat into fit. It's for you, a happier, healthier you. Because you know healthy is the new beautiful. An all-natural way to improve your health. It promotes a healthy digestive system, attacks and reduces belly fat, as well as gives you energy. You need to get yours today. Call 313-868-6612. Don't forget to exercise and eat right. Can I ask you a question? Why did you get vaccinated? My best friend couldn't. She caught COVID and passed away the day before her birthday. That is my why. Kim was a sunshine. Miss her dearly. I strongly, strongly recommend that everyone, especially in the city of Detroit, go get the shot. Kim Porter, I got this for you, girl. You may be gone, but you're not forgotten. Last year, we played with no fans, just quiet, empty stands. It wasn't the same. We want you all in the game. So step up to the plate and make sure you're safe. When I take a swing at COVID-19, get, get your, your vaccine. vaccine. The COVID vaccine is safe and effective, and it's available now. Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now. Time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. Got your lifetime supply of Viagra right here. Give me that. How dare you open my package? Hey, what you doing with all them pills for anyway, old... Oh, man, I ain't never took you as a sucker for them pharmaceutical companies. Always trying to sell you some synthetic chemical that don't do nothing but make you sicker. Now, this right here... This is all the medicine I need. What is that? Is that Divine Relief? <laughs> this is all the medicine I need. Divine Relief Rubbing Oil. Available at Super Kelly Beauty Supply. Healthwise Enterprise. Hollywood Beauty Supply. Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on... Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Can I ask you a question? Why did you get vaccinated? Try to get back to some type of normal life. I'm tired of being cooped up. I love to travel and I'm ready to get back to it. I like to get back to my grandmother's hugs. I really like being around people. It's not the same doing it virtually. We miss the touch and then dancing together and laughing together and singing together. Why did you get vaccinated? It gives us hope. Oh, the shot is giving me a peace of mind. Hey, Granny, I'm coming to hug you one day soon. WGPR Detroit HD2. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. FM 88.1 WHPR, Highland Park, WVIE 107.3 FM Charlotte, Amalia, Virgin Islands. Along with you on your phone and in the App Store, you can download WHPR TV now and take us along with you. I want you to know once again 
that on Sunday afternoon, we're going on another Black History tour, I must say. Mm-hmm. Down Woodward Avenue, the main street of the city of Detroit. June 13th. Yeah, we have black-owned businesses on Woodward. And uh, actually, there's quite a few. I was surprised. And, of course, there's uh, black history to be learned as well. You remember the Algiers Motel, right? That that was on Woodward Avenue. And um, so that's what we want to do. And it's a safe afternoon for socializing. As a uh, caravan, or some people say motorcade, people will be in their own vehicles. That's safe. Mm. You're at least 15 feet in front of or behind the drivers be, be in front and behind you. So that's one of the things that we're going to be uh, participating in uh, on Sunday, right. June 13th, the second Sunday in June. So we want you to uh, put that on your calendar. Cruise. Yeah, like that, a man. business cruise. Hey, yeah, you're yeah. right about that. Something t- uh, to look forward to. And, of course, on Saturday, there's always a Saturday afternoon with Hood Research starting at 2 o'clock. So uh, you just need to uh, get that number. You can Google Hood Research and get the number. Or if you have a pen and paper handy, you can write down the number. And the number is one nine seven eight two zero five thousand. That's one nine seven eight nine nine zero five zero zero zero. It rings once, then the access code is for you to punch in three three eight seven two nine. Press the pound key and join the conversation. Again, the access code is 338729. Press the pound key. Some people call it a tic-tac-toe sign. Some people call it a hashtag. Whatever you call it, press it and join the conversation. Now, um, Mark, back to uh, what I guess Bob Law was was, uh, speaking about. Mm -hmm. I remember after um, Coleman Young retired and Dennis Archer became the uh, mayor of the city of Detroit in 1994. It seemed to me that he got right busy (laughs) with the uh, Negro removal. We were almost at 2 million people in the city of Detroit. And uh, gentrification is also Negro removal. Uh, Began with the demolition of the Jeffries Projects. We're talking about hundreds of people. Now I have to get out. They have to move. They have to go somewhere. And some of them left Detroit, reducing the population. Herman Gardens, another right. public housing area that was on a retirement near the Southfield Freeway. Mm-hmm. Hundreds of people had to get out, had to move, uh-huh. had to go somewhere. You know, of course, we, the, the Brewster's uh, projects, we know, uh, has uh, uh, been demolished for quite a while. Mm-hmm. But um, that was uh, one of the most visible uh, means of gentrification. And this was in the early 90s. Early 90s. And he, he took office in 1994. In 1995, the Million Man March took place. That's right. Well, way over a million. October 16th. That's right. That's right. Well over a million in Washington, D.C. The most peaceful gathering you ever wanted to witness. Peaceful gathering. Not like January the 6th. I've got the CD with all of the rappers and things. They may have had a Million Man March CD. I picked that up. Mm. And... um, Mm-hmm. I've got the newspapers from the free press that next day said it was 400,000 of us down there, you know, the whole three-fifth human thing. <laughs> they did, oh, right, right. They could, they could not stand the fact that that was well over a million people. But for those of us who were there, yes. maybe those who don't remember, it was on a Monday. Mm-hmm. So you had to take off from work. Mm-hmm. And I let my employer know I would not be coming in that Monday. I left that Friday. Mm-hmm. to get to D.C., and I already knew D.C., and mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We picked up, I took four people with me, mm-hmm. and a friend of mine, his two sons, and then we picked up uh, my girlfriend's little brother in Cleveland. We stopped in Cleveland, grabbed him up, mm-hmm. and uh, i never forget, we were <laughs> we were heading down 70. I missed the turn to hit 76 to go to Breezewood, <laughs> and we were heading almost to Buffalo. We started seeing oh, no. Buffalo so many miles, so we had to come from the, the top of Pennsylvania down, oh, wow. and there were nothing but prisons. Um, all these small towns, all they had were prisons, and you knew who were in them prisons. Yes, and that that's how the t- town got its biggest income. Exactly, from the prisons. and that's how America lives. Mm-hmm. They live off they live off the the, the, the criminal justice system. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of money in these prisons, folks. They keep these small communities going. Right, and mm-hmm. uh, and I think the biggest thing from the Million Man March is when I got home after that, I felt like we didn't need to do any more marching. Mm-hmm. I felt like that right, should have right. been the march to end all marches. Right. You right. know, because we, and a lot of the sisters got to understand, we made a point of letting y'all know we apologize. Mm-hmm. We knew that we had some problems. We knew that we were dealing with a system that had us blocked in. Mm-hmm. And we apologized to the sisters the way we've been. We apologized. We atoned. It was a day of atonement. Mm-hmm. And I and I think that we kind of missed that. A lot of the sisters were like, ah, right, whatever. And even today, a lot of people look back on it and say, oh, that thing was just symbolic. It was deeper than that. Mm-hmm. It was deeper than just symbolism. It was an opportunity for the entire race to say, sit back, look, and say, how are we going to do this now? Mm-hmm. We got to move from here. And I, and I kind of, you know, I ain't got no problem with the Million Women March. I wrote articles about it. But I felt like it was almost like we didn't need a Million Women March. The Million Man March had made the point. And then I asked the sisters, okay, y'all going down, with, are we? Are you guys going to tone? Because, I mean, the sisters ain't perfect. And they were like, no, we going down for empowerment and sisterhood. <laughs> and I think from there, we had a break. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, we trying to get build that back because that's really what this is all about. What Brother mm-hmm. Bob Law was talking about, the music is division. Mm-hmm. They want to keep us divided. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. how they do it. They divide the people from the streets, from the so-called people that probably be bourgeois and all this old foolish, from the educated people. All of this is division. They keep the women and the men divided, the light skin, dark skin. All this mm-hmm. division has caused us to not know what to do next. That's and they right. program us. That's right. And even uh, they destroy, they have worked to destroy the school system. Now, that happened at the end of the 90s with the Governor John Engler, right. and they took um, many of the elective uh, uh, parts of the curriculum out. And most people, because it was very visible, mm-hmm. that they were eliminating the music and the sports. Mm-hmm. But the trades, those classes, and a lot of the students look forward to going to school and waiting for that class so they could do wood shop, yep. they could do electrical shop, they could learn about welding and, and all of the other <laughs> trades where they could make a good living <laughs> when they came out of high school. Electric shop. Absolutely. And Benjamin Davis Aerospace. Oh, my goodness. Those kids graduating could make $50,000 a year at 18 years old. And just think about it. Living at home, you think you died and went to heaven. And I don't think people realize I know. just Mm-mm. being a – just being a mechanic in the aviation industry, mm-hmm. you're going to start at about 90000 mm-hmm. That's to start. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm hearing that uh, the mayor wants people to uh, let him know uh, how they want him to spend the money. One of the ways the money can be spent is reestablishing the facility at the Detroit City Airport now known as the Coleman Young International Airport. That's mm-hmm. what it's called now. Okay. That's where Benjamin Davis Aerospace was located. It's no longer there. Mm-hmm. And that building is being used for the training or something with the fire department. Okay. With all the land the city has, they could have put that anywhere. Oh, In the meantime, they need to the reestablish <laughs> that you got that right. They got to reestablish Benjamin Davis Aerospace, we are going to need, according to Lieutenant Colonel Milben, over the next 10 years, they're going to need a million, okay, pilots and yeah, mechanics yeah. and et cetera. We got to call be, them Because of three, attrition. Yo, okay. They, they want to holler. All right. You got them like them. Okay. Hey, 
Happy you Monday. You all feedback with the old Bronehood Research. Talk to us. And with Mark Cummings. Who's calling? <laughs> Who we got Hello, on line can you three? Hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, good morning, Phil, and to your guest, the young man sitting there with you. I enjoy the show. Who, who I is? I enjoy the show. Okay. Um, but uh, you thought I was talking about the Million Man uh, March, and I, I thought it was such a positive thing, mm -hmm. and it made such a great um, impact. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't you don't really hear too many people. Uh, you know, uh, bringing it up about the Million Man March. But I wanted to ask the young man, can you can you get any type of uh, videos or anything to the yes, um, Million Man uh, March? Well, you know what? I've got plenty of video or videotape because I have my wife tape a lot of it. Uh, I'm going to have to just figure out a way to move it to DVD. That's a good question because CNN broadcast the entire thing mm -hmm. at that time. And uh, mm -hmm. I did tape a lot of it. And you know what? I, I'd just like to say this also, Ms. Broden and everybody in the listening audience. Mm -hmm. I think what happened was I don't think the people realized how powerful the Million Man March was going to be. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I know Brother Farrakhan was saying, you know, go back to the community, join the organizations. But a lot of them guys there didn't want to join the NAACP. They didn't want to be a part of the urban. They already knew those was co-opted organizations. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them wanted to start their own organization. Right. So we were hoping that the people who put together the Million Man March would be a feeder for us to start our own organizations. Mm -hmm. So guys tried to do it here in Detroit. You had uh, the brothers over at the Soul Center, uh, Bomani and those guys, right. Paul Green, all them guys. They tried to start the Million Man March organization. Mm -hmm. You had a Million Man March chapter in Minnesota. You had one that tried to start in, in New York. So the guys tried to do it, but we didn't have the capital to keep it going. And I think that was, if we would have had the input and the, and the cash flow to keep that going, mm -hmm. Million Man March organization now would be thriving. Mm -hmm. And people will remember that. And that would be a holiday here for black folks. Because yeah. that's what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you know, I think, too, it caught, it, it caught uh, the media by surprise just to see and realize how uh, fair time to get men, uh, black men, to, a mind to come together where they could, uh, you know, come together on this. And, and it seemed like it was such a peaceful thing. Oh, definitely. So I'm no, it didn't seem like it was. It was peaceful. <laughs> no, no problem. Not only was it peaceful, when they finished at the end and left that mall, it was spotless. Spotless. They got a lot of picture books out there. You can uh -huh. go online and you got a fun... <laughs> We got to find the black bookstores in Detroit now. They didn't right. pretty much shut down most of them. Yes, and la last year caused a lot of the businesses to, to close down like that. You're right. So we're going to have to uh, look for one that, that uh, is still functioning. And I do know that Nefertiti from the Truth Bookstore, mm -hmm. who had been stationed at Northland Mall, comes to Northwest Activity Center now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not sure whether she's there every Saturday or one Saturday a month. Perhaps if there's someone tuned in who knows what her schedule is, call and let us know. You know what? Yeah. I'll even donate. I got a couple of Million Man March picture books. I'll donate one as a gift for the uh, raffle. Oh, okay. For June, June, June 13th, 13th Business Oh, cruise. okay. That would be great. Um, a lot yeah. of people, like you said, they don't remember how powerful that was. That was, right. Okay. There was something else you wanted to share? Oh, I'm Hello, just, I'm just excited we had Bob Law on this morning. <laughs> that brother's an icon and mm -hmm. been doing it for years. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think we don't realize that these people out here have given their entire lives yes. to making things better for black people. That's right. That's and right. actually That's making right. this country better. Because mm -hmm. once this country acknowledges black people mm -hmm. as what we are, a powerful force mm -hmm. and a force to be respected, that's what? the only way things are going to change. Because well, we see this country going to clink in a handbasket. I think that's exactly what they recognized October the 16th, 1995, that the black community is a powerful force. And they needed to show us respect. But rather than do that, uh, some a part of the 1% and 
and also the David Duke gang decided that we can't uh, let the whole white community learn about the character of black people, Mm. about the power of black people, about the love that black people have for humanity, as a matter of fact. So what do they do? They had to uh, continue pushing the um, drugs in yeah, our community the <laughs> and the yeah this negative music in our community the lyrics and and all of that because if you think back the music of the 60s was very positive mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now there there is um a, one professor who likes to point out well you did have some you know the temptation sang about on cloud nine now that that was negative yeah they did and then, then well, you just had about a, doing drugs. And then you had, negative. right. Then you, then you had the uh, um, super fly, and and that was <laughs> negative. And yeah, it was, you know. But um, I don't see where everything had to be one hundred and and fifty percent uh, positive. They say if you. Uh, don't see bad, you don't know what good is. But you know, Theo, all mm-hmm. them guys like Curtis Mayfield. And you had just earlier mentioned the fact that, you know, hey, the Temptations, they would always also have positive music. Uh, and they did. And then Maxine Powell, the lady whose responsibility it was to make sure that all of the people at Motown, all of them were impeccably dressed. Etiquette coaching. I mean, from head to toe, <laughs> clean, dressed well spoke well, knew how to get in and out of a limousine, by the way. (laughs) Yes. And they set an example for the youth Mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. And the guys wanted to dress good like the Temptations. Ladies wanted to dress like the Supremes and all. And this was positive. And that's the kind of thing that Bob Law was talking about this morning. Uh The examples. That's right. And the music and how the music teaches, how the music gets out various points. And this music that was that was honored by the Grammys and the NAACP, I, you know, I just wonder, what were they smoking? Hey, and marijuana hadn't even been legalized yet. <laughs> but those two groups, wow. Well, so we, we do have to uh, get the word out, and the National Leadership Conference is, is going to have a uh, Zoom um, uh, meeting and people uh, are, have been uh, uh, signed to uh, testify. Okay, okay. So, That's something thing. else to look, look forward out to. Here. Mm-hmm. I picked up the black magazine, matter of fact. Folks, oh. they always yeah. have these black magazines here at the station. Mm-hmm. Uh, pick one up if you find one out there. I know they used to have them at the barber shops mostly. Mm-hmm. Sliding into summer, they said they got a BLM Black Lives Matter Detroit co-leader has penned the essay that's in here. Oh. So it should be interesting. Oh, okay. Check it out. And, okay. uh, we got to support our mediums. Let's yes. Grow. And I think that's another big thing. Once they passed that communications bill back there in 96, it changed everything. Oh, You know, they allowed yeah. these companies to come in and buy up all our little bitty stations. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. They could own as many stations as they want. It used to be they could only have, I think it was eight was the amount. Well, not only that. They they had to stay in one class. Mm-hmm. They could not purchase radio, TV, newspaper. Okay. If you were going to purchase radio, you had radio. If you wanted television networks, television networks. Yeah, but you could not mix them. Couldn't cross them over. But now, oh yeah, boy, they just, you know, what, whatever. It just, changed just, things. Just, so yes, we, it did. I mean, that's why it's so important for people to realize. Mm-hmm. This is WHPR, TV mm-hmm. 33, people. Black mm-hmm. owned, black operated. Mm-hmm. They're getting it done down here. Brother R.J. Watkins getting it done. Henry Tyler getting it done. Timmy Tim Smith, the <laughs> engineer. I mean, he just does it all down here, oh, folks. Yes. And that's what it's about. You like to be around your family and see them growing. And that's what it's about, and being a part of the growth. And that's why we're here on HPR, because we want to be that's a part right. of this growth. That's right. Absolutely. Definitely want to do that. Did you have the... You know, uh, you know, got somebody going again. Uh-oh. We got time for another call, Miss Bro. Let's see sure. who we got on line oh, three. Okay. You all feedback. Hood research. The old bro, Mark Cummings, how you doing today? Hey, peaceful. Hey, you know, I, you know, Queen, big brother, I had called back because 
I really thank the both of you understand for bringing Bob Law on the airway. Mm-hmm. You know, because so many of our giants, as Brother said, have been fighting, you know, all their lives for black the upliftment of black people. That's right. And, and, and you know, we have a tendency to wait to, you know, after uh, they, they made their transition that we won't even we want to talk about or give them their flowers. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm glad that y'all did what y'all did, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I really love the both of you all for what you've done or whatever, because like I said, you know, so many of our giants that are working, they're gone. They're yes, gone. Yes. And for you to bring Bob Law on, on the airways like this here in the city mm-hmm. of Detroit, it's a blessing. You know, God, God is looking on the both of you all for what you just done because it's our time. It's yeah. our time. And we need to uh, 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 rally the troops, understand, and, and go to work, understand, because we are in a war. You yes, know, we there are. were three things that, that the white man said he would never teach the Negro. Well, the yeah. science of mating, the science of business, and the science of warfare. Mm. And mm. they've been waging war on us ever oh, yeah. since they brought us here. Right, All right. kind of ways. Yeah, and this love, is... Love the, both of y'all. Love the both of y'all. Uh, and any, anything I can do to help you all, I'm here. All I'm right. here. You well, are you a member of Hood Research? Thank you. Big pardon. Are you a member of Hood Research? No, sir. I'm a, I'm a part of the nation of something, but I don't have a part in being a part of the research. Man, give me, I want you to become a member. Ain't number twenty dollars a year, and because ain't, you ain't beca- got no, you, 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 where do I drop it off at? I'm gonna take care. Radio station. Yes, yes, I'll that'll be fine. Here, take my number. Call me. I'll come right to you because I'm gonna get you a, one of these books because we got all. We always got gifts for people oh. coming. All right, what's your number? Three one three five one zero. Hold on, my pen one. Okay, five one zero one two five zero one two five zero. And that's Mark Cummings. Give me a call, and um, I'm gonna come directly to you with an application, and everything, and I'm gonna get you one of these books I got out here, brother. Okay, that's five one zero one two five zero. That's it. Right. I got three, you. Right, I'm gonna give you a call one, then, bro. Three Do one that. three. And what's your name again? Brother Jihad, Jihad Muhammad. Jihad Muhammad. Jihad. Yeah, I done heard you on the radio before, brother. Mm-hmm. Thanks for calling and checking I, I in. I try to stay out there, brother. Love to both of y'all. Oh, no thank doubt. you. We love, we you, love you, too. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it is it is so um, heartwarming when, when uh, you receive calls from people who have uh, heard about us, who have followed us who have joined in and, and uh, called us mm. uh, to know that uh, it, it just helps us to, to know that we are doing good in the community. Oh, no doubt, no mm. doubt, Miss Bro. You've been doing this for 30 years. You and Bob Law have been doing this a long time. <laughs> right. And I think if we could just get the icons, the young people. See, the problem is, I think, right. is that the old folk, you're so busy, you don't have time to really mentor these mm. young folks. So mm-hmm. they start out and they go out and do their own thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what happened with jazz. Because I had a buddy, he was crazy about jazz. Jazz Messi, he, he, he DJed on radio stations with jazz. Mm-hmm. But the older jazz, they were all the younger jazz guys. was like, man, the older guys, you know, they don't seem like they got time for us. Or they don't want to allow us to move into their position. Mm-hmm. And now you don't really hear that much about jazz. It's mm-hmm. almost like it didn't disappear off the scene. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, that that is sad because uh, Harold McKinney, do you remember? Harold McKinney, the uh, keyboard uh, player, had a workshop, Mm -hmm. and it was every Thursday. And I had been told about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds nice, you know. And and, uh, not driving, I said, okay, yeah, one day I'll go. So um, I did. I I was able to go down there one Thursday, and and from then on, there were friends of mine who who were there. I'm like, oh, (laughs) wow, what is is this all home week or something? And every Thursday there, he would have his workshop, and uh, up and coming uh, musicians okay. and singers and all would go there. And we we were devastated when he died. It mm. it, it was it just um. Don't it just seem like the icons but, go too soon. Mm-hmm, it does, and uh, so anyway, uh, some of us started going to Burt's mm-hmm. uh, there in Eastern Market, and uh, they have uh, different. Uh, genres there on thursday they have jazz on fridays they used to have blues on uh one of the other days i think it's saturday mm-hmm. with the the uh, eastern market over there karaoke so and and um 
it, it was just different uh, opportunities, different styles of music, and people would come for that which they enjoyed the most. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we were able to stay, you know, together as a, um, a team, and, and a lot of it was in memory of Harold McKinney. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to get in touch with these Black Lives Matter persons. Mm -hmm. And then we got to get them down here because they need to know people like yourself that have been doing this that would be for great. a long time. Cause and and that would be wonderful. You know, and the other thing that I want to uh, share with them and other protesters, first of all, I have nothing, nothing, nothing against protesting. I have a problem with that. It uh, raises the level of uh, consciousness yes. for people. It um, uh, makes people people aware mm -hmm. of what the problem is and and it also instructs them as to what they need to do get involved mm -hmm. but in addition to that i hope that the protesters mm -hmm. will spend since they they have so much energy spend some of that energy registering people to vote encouraging people to vote taking people to vote mm -hmm. or helping them if it's an absentee situation and voting themselves. That's right. Because it is a power that we have. It is. And, and folks say, oh, I go vote. You know, they don't do what they want to do and blah, blah, this, that, nothing. But you know, if our vote wasn't so valuable, there wouldn't be so much energy being put out there Changing laws to no, keep no. us from voting. You know, and, and, and another thing, Theo, because, and because of the program, a lot of these young cats feel like this is the first time black folks didn't protest it. They got t shirts that say, I'm not my ancestors. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> you know, that, that's where they got it from. <laughs> Come oh, on now. Ancestors. Your ancestors are reading you here. In the first place. <laughs> okay. Amen. So Amen. We got to learn the, the respect between the young and the old. Mm -hmm. We got to fix this. Mm -hmm. That's that division I've been talking about. We got to fix it. Right, right. And, and I think con conversation helps to make a change like that. And that's one of the reasons we have an afternoon with Hood Research. That's right. We have people come on and, and uh, share. They make presentations. We have callers who have information, and they share their information. We have callers who call, and they ask questions. And uh, we even had a conversation this past uh, Saturday on an afternoon with Hood Research from uh, Reverend uh, David uh, Jackson. And he, he talked about the conflict between uh, Israel and, and Palestine. Wow. Yeah, he, he even made sure that people knew there are really three entities, not just two. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're the uh, Arabs, the Jewish community, and they're the Christians. Mm -hmm. okay. And all three of them want that land. Mm -hmm. And wow. nobody asked me, but I think everybody <laughs> should get off the land and it should be cleared. Mm -hmm. Two more minutes. And Ms. be Brown, protected. We got two minutes. Okay. And that land should be protected, you know, much like uh, Yellowstone National Park. That's nobody right. lives there, but it's a protected piece of property. So nobody can desecrate. That's how that land should be. That's right. Oh, well, now that we're at the end of this show today, I want to say, as I always do, it's not necessary for you to know everything. But what is necessary is for you to know how to find what you need when you need it. And we at Hood Research seek out as much information as we can to share with you and invite you to share information with us. That helps us all to make better informed decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hood Research has a website, has Twitter, has Facebook. You can Google Hood Research or you can Go on to hoodresearch.org. And our email is as follows. Starts with the word contact. Contact at hoodresearch.org. Contact at hoodresearch.org. And lastly, the telephone number is area code 248-234-2371. Area code 248-234-2371. Okay, Mark, you want to say? Just want to say once again. Beautiful show. Thank you for all our listeners, callers. We love all of y'all out there. Timmy, Tim, as always, we love you, brother. Send us home, baby. All right. Hi, Michael.
<laughs> hey there, it's me, Butter, with my new book, The Many Adventures of These Nuts. Let's be nuts about our health. Join me and my friends, Wally Walnut, Almond Cruz, Pumpkin Spice, Chica Chaminsky, Morgan Raisin, and Halle Cranberry. Here with rhythm and song to share a fun way to stay safe and healthy. So together, we can all be nuts about our health. Ebook available now on Amazon or get a hardcover copy at www.thesenutstrailmix.com. That's nuts with a Z. At Cabin Fever, not to worry. Join me Sunday, June 13th, as we cruise down Woodward Avenue and learn about our businesses on and near Woodward Avenue. If you enjoy the Black History Tour, you'll enjoy Sunday, June 13th, 12 noon, 8 Mile and Woodward. 